Hey guys, welcome back. And in this tutorial, uh, we're going to go over some general knowledge and facts about the road and some safety features uh, that you need to know about uh, for the second part of that test. Okay, again, it's 80% uh, uh, you're going to have to pass with, and there's a lot of intricate details inside the driver's manual. So we're going to go over and highlight some of the things that may be on the test for you and uh, hopefully avoid those trick questions okay are you ready to get started okay let's go now being that it's a dmv test and they're not going to ask you you know a lot of questions uh, they're probably not going to ask you the obvious questions like uh, what is a, a double yellow line okay obviously that is when uh, you have oncoming traffic coming towards you and you cannot pass uh, for another car when you see a double yellow line okay uh, but you know it could be in there but you want to uh, look at the more obscure uh, type of questions and uh, type of things that they may ask you like you know what is a, a broken white line what does that do okay that means uh, that all traffic is going in the same direction and that you are allowed to pass okay uh, for broken yellow lines in the center, that means there's oncoming traffic coming towards you, and but you can also pass another car that's in front of you. Okay, now if you see a broken yellow line with a solid uh, yellow line on the other side, that means that you cannot pass if the solid line is on your side. Okay, so in this particular picture, the car on the left cannot pass a car in front of it, but if you're in the right hand side and you have a broken uh, yellow line that you can pass the person in front of you the reason why they do that is for uh, certain uh, safety measures in certain areas of the road where it's safe to pass on one side but not safe to pass on the other the other thing that you want to be aware of is hand positions uh, especially when you're taking the driving test is that you want to keep your uh, hands at eight o'clock and four o'clock you know they're gonna uh, if you look at the steering wheel as a, a clock you know you have your 12 6 uh, 3 and 9 they want you to keep your hands at 8 and 4 okay that's kind of uh, self-explanatory one of the things that you're probably going to be asked is uh, about speed limits all right and one of the things that come up is what is the speed limit around a school, a business, or residential zones, okay? That answer is 25 miles an hour, all right? You have to be sure that uh, you don't get tricked on this. Also about stopping for school buses, okay? Whenever you see flashing yellow lights and they're loading and unloading, even if they don't have signals on there, you must stop at a school bus, okay? There are certain times when you don't have to stop like in this picture here, you see the median uh, cutting down the highway. Now, if you see something like this, then the oncoming traffic do, do not have to stop, okay? But if you're in the uh, behind a school bus and they're stopped, you must stop alongside of them, okay? You must not pass any school buses or that's a serious fine and some uh, children could be in danger. Yielding the right of way, okay? One of the things that may be on there is if the traffic light at an intersection is not working, all the vehicles that come into that section must stop. The driver on the left must yield to the driver on the right, okay? So the, the drivers on the right-hand side always have the right of way. Also, stationary and stopped vehicles, when you pass someone on the highway let's say if they have broken down uh, you have to proceed with caution and maintain a safe speed for highway conditions okay uh, in this case it would be like a, a mail truck you have to slow down and proceed with caution that will be on uh, that may be on the test as well uh, changing lanes we went over that a little bit and uh, some things that you have to uh, be sure of is before moving into another lane you have to quickly glance over your shoulder okay and check for any other vehicles coming uh, that may be in your blind spot all right so that's very important I, I encourage a lot of people to 
always uh, check behind your uh, left shoulder or your right shoulder depending on how you're going to pass. Another thing that you may need to do is don't speed up if you're being passed, all right? So if you're this vehicle here, <laughs> don't speed up and try to, um, you know, block the other person from passing you, okay? A lot of that happens uh, during road rage and a lot of people get hurt. Okay, a couple other things that may be asked on the test is about turning, okay? Turning, making a right-hand turn. Obviously, you need to be in the lane closest to the curb. Uh, when you're making a right hand turn you need to signal uh, to the people behind you that you're turning at least uh, three or four seconds or a hundred feet uh, before the turn okay when making a left hand turn you need to be in the furthest left lane possible and uh, turning in an intersection you got to have your uh, your blinker on your turn signal on so that you know that other people are uh, going to be aware that you're turning left, okay? Left hand turns can be tricky too. You may be also asked about hand signals, okay? These are old fashioned, but if your turn signal doesn't work, you need to know how to use uh, these hand signals, okay? Left turn, right turn, slow down, and stop, okay? That may be on there as well. Other things that uh, may be on there, they may ask you about this chart about the uh, two, three, four second rule, okay? You need to know uh, that you have a good cushion and that you have plenty of time to stop uh, when you're following somebody, okay? Just in case they slam on the brakes. Two seconds under 35 miles an hour, three seconds under 35 to 45 miles an hour, four seconds under 46 to 70 miles an hour. Now, uh, you can just take a look at this chart and see how far apart that you need to be according to your speed. All right, they may talk to you about blind spots. All right, blind spots are dangerous areas that you can't see. You may turn your, uh, your head to the right or to the left looking to find out if it's okay to pass or if somebody's aside you and you may have a blind spot where you can't see. This is important uh, to know about your blind spots when you're uh, looking at uh, mopeds and motorcycles, okay? This is the number one cause of accidents and fatalities uh, with motorcycles and mopeds is because you can't see them uh, and they're in, their blind, in your blind spot, okay? And that's the other thing is you don't want to be in their blind spot, okay? If the motorcyclists, they can't see you in their mirrors then, uh, and they don't turn around to see if you're right next to them, then uh, that, that could be an issue, all right? But also, you don't want to be in somebody else's blind spot. If they can't, if you're looking at somebody and you're right beside them, and if they were to turn their head and you couldn't see their face, then that, you're in their blind spot, okay? So pay attention to that as well. They may ask you about visibility, all right? Now, visibility, uh, when it's dark out, when there's fog, when there's inclement weather, uh, you have to be aware of, uh, you know, getting a good visibility and how fast you need to go, all right? So you definitely want to uh, check out this section about visibility um, and when to use your uh, low beams and your high beams, okay? Whenever there's fog, you should be using your uh, low beams. Uh, when I say low beams, I'm talking about your headlights, okay? So uh, whenever you there's fog or if it's hard to see, you should be using your low beams. At nighttime, you want to use your high beams and uh, anything that's within 500 feet coming towards you that you can see, okay? So if also, uh, this is another thing that they may ask you about the high beams. Uh, if there's an oncoming uh, vehicle coming to you within about 500 feet, then you need to uh, switch back to the low beams, okay? Because you don't want to blind the other person. All right. Distracted driving, you need to be aware of that. Uh, that's anywhere from changing the radio, texting, uh, talking to passengers, eating, texting, uh, you know, doing your email, whatever it is, you have to be aware of this, even uh, for yourself and for other people around you. If you see a distracted driver and you pull up next to them, then you need to pass them and get away from them as soon as possible. 
drinking and driving. You may be asked uh, what the percentage is for the uh, blood alcohol content, what the legal um, percentage is, and uh, it's 0 .08 uh, for Virginia. So you definitely want to stay away from drinking and driving, okay? One drink can impale uh, your judgment, okay? And it can definitely uh, affect uh, your life for, for forever, okay? And somebody else's life. The other thing they may ask you is about uh, traffic uh, crashes, okay? Uh, you know, what to do at a scene. What, what do you need to do? What's, um, you know, what are the things that come to mind that you need to have ready? Uh, some of the things, what happens if you, uh, you hit a parked car on the road or in a parking lot, okay? Uh, this section down here may be on your test that says, you know, that you need to, uh, you know, do the best you can to find that owner uh, of the vehicle or you can be liable uh, from the police and they can uh, charge you a hefty fine for leaving the scene of an accident, okay? So those are the intricate things that uh, you may be needing aware, uh, to be aware of, safety belts, seat belts, airbags, child safety seats, uh, you know, these type of things. This is uh, just a review at the end of this manual. They talk to you about uh, what's expected and if you're drinking and driving and the laws and things like that, the different types of uh, licenses a commercial license, school bus driving, things like that. And one other thing that may be on your test is um, they may ask you how many days do you have to notify the DMV uh, if you change your address, okay? And that answer is 30 days, all right? So if you move uh, and got a new location, then uh, you need to notify the DMV uh, within 30 days, okay? I know it sounds uh, kind of weird that they would ask that, but you never know. So you want to be ready, you want to be prepared, and uh, you know those are some of the intricate uh, details that they may ask you, and you definitely want to be prepared because you want to pass that test. And it also is the safety for your family and the other people around you. Okay. Again, I hope you got a lot out of this, and if you have any other questions, you can go over to the DMVVATest.com. That's the DMVVATest.com, and they will help you out uh, with all the testing uh, strategies and things that you need to know so that you can pass that test. Thanks again for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.